Hello and welcome to What The Math. In today's video, we're going to be talking about measuring the spread of data. Now, what does that mean? Let me just show you a picture. So here's an example of three different sets of uh, statistical data. This one here is A, this one here is B, this one here is C. If you look really closely and if you try to calculate their mean, mode, and, uh, and median, their mean, their mode, and their median are all equal. Uh, that means that even though these are three different sets, they will give you exactly the same mean, exactly the same mode, exactly the same median. Uh, let's just look at another example. Imagine that um, um, in our two classes, one class gets grades of 4, 5, 6, and then the other class gets the grades of 1, 7, 7. Now, the mean for both of these classes is the same. The mean is actually uh, mean is 5. Or no, I'm going to write it as x bar equals to five. But these are two different sets. They look different, and if you graph them, they will look entirely different. Um, so this is another important concept of statistics, measuring how how much data is spread across the graph. So right here, you can see that A, for A, most of the data is actually in the middle. Whereas for C, if you look at C, most of its data is actually spread out across the entire graph. And this is what we call spread of data. So what we were talking about before dealt with this, uh, the center of the data, the center of the data. So this is the part right here. And now we're going to be talking about the spread of the data, essentially the, the bottom part. And to measure the spread of the data, there are actually three specific statistical um, values we need to look at. The first one we already looked at, the first one is called range. And range is basically the biggest value minus the smallest value. That's range. Uh, the second one, the one we're going to be talking about today, is called interquartile range. Interquartile range, or basically IQR. And this is something you can find on your calculator. And the third one we're going to take a look at later is called standard deviation. This is the one that you really should know. It's probably the most difficult one and also the most important one. All right, so let's talk about interquartile range, and we're going to use example 11 on page 183. So I'm going to rewrite the data first, and then we're, we're going to try to discuss what uh, interquartile range is. So here's the question, and the question is, for the data set of these numbers, find the median, lower quartile, upper quartile, and interquartile range. Now, this is a very common question, so make sure you understand what it says. So what is interquartile range? And to know this, what we need to know is lower quartile and upper quartile. So these three values are actually related. Um, to, to find it, we need to rewrite these numbers in order first. All right, they're a little bit sideways, but that will have to do. So these are the same numbers rewritten in order. And we know that to find the median, we have to look for the number n plus 1 divided by 2. So this is to find the median. Let's just do it right now. There are 15 numbers. 15 plus 1 gives us 16 divided by 2 gives us 8. So we're looking at the 8th number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the, uh, the actual median is going to be right here right here so the median is six the answer to this is six now we're going to look for a lower quartile to find the lower quartile we have to uh, basically draw a line where the median is and and now we're going to use these two different sets as separate statistics or a separate data set so essentially we're now looking for two other medians one median right here and one median right here this left median is going to be called lower quartile because it's on the lower side. Quartile just means one quarter, lower quartile. And this one will be called upper quartile. So essentially, these two numbers um, are medians within the median. So find the median first and then find two more medians. And on your calculator, th these are called Q1 and Q3. This is Q1 and this is Q3. And it's important to realize that we're not actually including this six, so this six we can cross over. Uh, so we're looking at all of these sets, and you can see that the middle here uh, is the number right here. You can actually use the same function if, if this helps you. You can try to do n plus one divided by two if there's a lot of numbers. But here it's quite easy to see that this is the middle because there's three on both sides, and here the middle is right here because there's three on the other side. So Q1 equals two, three, and Q3 equals two, eight. And this is our lower quartile and upper quartile. And interquartile range, as you may guess, is basically one minus the other. So 
IQR, interquote, this is IQR, IQR, IQR equals to Q3 minus Q1, which is basically 8 minus 3, which is 5. So this number right here shows us how spread out the data is on this in this data set. Uh, so the two numbers that we actually need from this data set is the range and the interquota range. And so this is the number we're looking for, and this shows us how spread the data is um, in this data set. And now we're going to do the same problem with the calculator because it's a lot faster and a lot easier to do it here. Uh, now remember, if you are using calculator, make sure to mark all your buttons. So we're going to click stat, edit, enter these values. It doesn't have to be in order. So 7, 3, 1, 7, 1, and 9. So these are the uh, the numbers in order that they're shown here. So we don't have to actually write them, and this is a lot faster because of this. Now we go to calc, one variable stats, and calculate. This will give you your variables. So it says right here, your mean is on top. Uh, this right here is standard deviation. This is what we're doing next time. And here you can already see I have a mistake because it says I have n equals 14. So this is 14 values, but we actually know that this is 15 values. So I have to double check my, uh, my stats right here. I think I missed a number. And I just realized I missed a number three. So I'm going to add three on the bottom and it doesn't have to be in order. It just needs to be in there. So I'm going to add three because I missed it. Um, and let's do calc again. So n has to be 15 so the, because there are 15 numbers. All right, good. So this is the mean. This is standard, devi standard deviation, which we'll talk about later. Uh, Q1 right here, right, 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 right here. Q1 equals to three. This is exactly what we found. Q1 is three. Uh, Q3 is eight. Q3 is eight. And uh, median is six. Median is six. I crossed it over, but it was six. And to find interquartile range, you just basically take, you take this minus this. Eight minus three gives you five. So it only took under a minute to find this, but just make sure that you write the buttons that you're pressing. So I press stat, I enter edit, I, I went to calc, one variable stats, and then I clicked on uh, calculate. And that's really it. That's really how you do um, interquartile range. And next, uh, in the next topic, we're going to apply this to graphs that you'll have to draw on the test. These, these are graphs are called box and whisker plots. But this is the next video. All right. Thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye bye.